This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of the mouth of out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Shalom. Given all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raha Kadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing his doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. The title of this lesson is, Can Anybody Receive the Holy Spirit? And the short answer is no, absolutely not. Not anyone can receive the Holy Spirit. There's a prerequisite, all right, <clears throat> as far as who gets the Holy Spirit. Okay, and we just read it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 20. We're going to read it again. Pay attention. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, the Israelites, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, the Israelites, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them. The Israelites are the only nation whom the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, has made covenants with. Okay? Saith the Lord, my spirit, what spirit? My Holy Spirit, that is upon thee, and my words, which I have put in thy mouth, the understanding of the Holy Scriptures, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Okay, now that's pretty straightforward. Now people say, well, this is the Old Testament. The Heavenly Father opened up the second covenant to all nations. That's Christian foolishness and folly. That's not true. Nothing can be further from the truth. All right, because the truth of the matter is the second covenant is only or exclusively for the Hebrew Israelites, okay? That Christian madness never takes into account what the scriptures say, okay? What they believe is a doctrine that was created by men, okay? And if it undermines or if it's contrary to what's written in the Bible, then guess what? It has absolutely no validity whatsoever, okay? It's just, it's nothing but foolishness and folly, like I said. Okay? Now, the Heavenly Father said that he's going to put his spirit, right, in us, the Israelites, and my words, which I have put in thy mouth. And the only people that actually have the understanding of the Holy Scriptures these days, right, are the Israelites. Okay? Now, we know in order to have the understanding of the Holy Scriptures, you need to have the Holy Spirit. You have to be endowed with the Holy Spirit in order to understand. We're going to get more scriptures to prove that. You can't just open the Bible and then start reading and understanding the narrative of the Holy Scriptures. Okay? And that's the way the Heavenly Father designed it. Okay? Now, he says... My word shall not depart out of thy mouth, right? Nor out of the mouth of thy seed, all right, your descendants, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. The Heavenly Father says in the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 34, if I recall correctly, if that's the right precept, that his covenants he will not break. And what was this? This is a covenant that he made with the Israelites. Right? Let's get that. Psalms. 
chapter 89, verse 34. Because a lot of Christians always seem to think that, oh, it's just, it was, it was written in the Old Testament, so it's, it's null and void. No, the Lord says, I don't change, nor does he break his covenants. Let's read. Psalms chapter 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Okay, so the Heavenly Father never broke that covenant, which means the only nation that can get the Holy Spirit are the Israelites. This is a covenant with them, right? Let's go to the book of uh, John. Chapter 20, verse 22. <clears throat> and it reads, And when he said, or when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Right? And when he said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now, Christians, when they see this word breathe, right, they generally associate it with the act of respiration, okay? Inhale, exhale, right? Because in the book of Genesis, when the Lord says he breathed on Adam, what he meant was he gave him his Holy Spirit, okay? And with having the Holy Spirit, he gave him the understanding, okay, of, uh, of, uh, the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Luke, because that is actually the uh, precept that I was looking for, or meant to pull up. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. And this is the point. Then opened he their understanding. How? Because he was breathed upon, right? That they might understand the scriptures. You see, before their understanding was opened up, guess what? They couldn't understand the scriptures, okay? Which is proof that you just can't will the Holy Spirit on you, okay? And I should have gotten this from the very start, but I'm going to get it now. Because the center of the controversy is amongst Christians, they seem to think that you can just will the Holy Spirit Anybody who wants to receive it can pray for it and get it. I mean, they don't even understand that you don't pray to the Holy Spirit. Okay, you pray to the Heavenly Father in order to receive the Holy Spirit. And again, what's the prerequisite for receiving the Holy Spirit in the first place? Well, you have to be a Hebrew Israelite. Okay, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. You Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and those of you that be like unto the speckled bird, right? You may look like the other nations, but you are in fact Israelites if you can receive this gospel, if it resonates with your spirit, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to understand it, point blank, period. And if you understand it, that means the Heavenly Father chose you to receive the Holy Spirit in order to understand his gospel, right? Now, read this foolishness. This is Christianity. This is the essence of Christianity. They just make up shit as, it, as they go along. Prayer to the Holy Spirit. Well, if this is the Heavenly Father's Spirit, then why wouldn't you pray to Him? Okay? Because He gives you the Holy Spirit. Prayer to the Holy Spirit in every need. Holy Spirit, my light, my life, my love, my strength. Be with me now and always in all my doubts, anxieties, and trials. Come, Holy Spirit. In hours, in loneliness, weariness, and grief, come Holy Spirit in failure, in loss, and disappointment. Come Holy Spirit when others fail me, when I fail myself. Come Holy Spirit when I am ill, unable to work, depressed. Come Holy Spirit now and forever and in all things. Reading this, this looks legit. Okay? If someone came across this, they would say, well, damn, all I have to do is pray to the Holy Spirit and then I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit. This is deception. Okay, and this is a, it's just a bold faced lie because 
the Heavenly Father doesn't operate like this. How do we know? Well, let's go to the scriptures. Okay? So you can't just make up things as you go along because it sounds cool. You know? Because people sign on and, and say, you know what? Yeah, I agree with this. It, it sounds legit. It looks legit. It looks pretty. Look at, look at the way it's created. You got a little dove in the background here. A little hand down here. Right? I mean, it looks legit, but it's it's not. It's deception. Okay, let's prove that. Let's go to the book of, um, let's see, John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, the Holy Spirit. He didn't say pray to the Holy Spirit. He says the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit in my name. He shall teach you all things. Who's going to teach you all things? The Holy Spirit, right? And bring all things to your remembrance. Now, this is another cut to the Christians because this is obviously talking about the Israelites or the, the audience is obviously the Israelites. How do we know? Because it says it's going to bring some of the things, 50% of the things, 75% of the, No, all things to your remembrance, meaning... That this is something that you once knew, okay? But because the Heavenly Father, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy, sent us or scattered us into all nations, okay? The vast majority of the Hebrew Israelites would lose this understanding, would lose their heritage. Now, there are uh, tribes in Africa, okay, um, that, are, that were able to maintain... Um, their Hebrew Israelite heritage. Okay, not all Africans are, uh, or not all, yeah, not all Africans are Hamites. Some, and I'm not saying Africans. Well, they're Hamites, but um, not all of them are Hamites. A lot of them, or some of them, I, I should say, are in fact Hebrew Israelites. Because remember, after 70 A.D., after Rome sacked Jerusalem or Israel. Our people, as commanded by Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, he told them to flee into the mountains of Africa, okay? The interiors, uh, primarily the west coast of Africa, you know, uh, uh, the Ivory Coast, Gold Coast, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, okay? All those countries... Uh, contain a lot of our people still to this day in 2022. How do we know that? Because many of the customs, uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite customs, were maintained for generations, and generations. Okay, so that's very important to remember. All right. Now, again, pursuant to the Book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4, the Heavenly Father cut us off, cut off. Cut us off from, you know, knowing the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, right? Um, we lost the uh, Paleo-Hebrew tongue, okay? We were stripped bare of all of our culture and heritage, okay? Especially when we went into cap captivity here in Babylon the Great, okay? Now, let's go to the book of... Um, Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8, because we remember, uh, uh, Salakia, we talked about the Heavenly Father breathing on um, Israelites, and that's how they got their understanding, right? And this basically reinforces that, all right? And it reads, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh, the spirit of life, who's the Holy Spirit, entered into them, right? And then what happened? And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now, this is obviously a metaphor, okay? Because this isn't uh, literally talking about the spirit of life entering into the Israelites. They stood upon their feet. These were the dry bones, pursuant to the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, Okay, 
and that was representative of the spiritual death or the dead state that the Israelites were in because they were cut off. Like I said, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4, tells you that the Heavenly Father cut us off from thy, he discontinued us from our heritage. And I'm roughly paraphrasing, okay? And because of it, that is how we became spiritually dead, okay? Remember, verse 8 up here says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, okay? And again, this is, this is a sim symbolism, all right? It obviously wasn't literal. It's not talking about a literal uh, group of dead bodies, okay, that littered the streets, all right? Again, it was a spiritual death, okay? And after 350 years, right, of dwelling in Babylon the Great, that's when the Heavenly Father said, according to prophecy, he's going to give us his Holy Spirit. We're going to find out who we are, right? We're going to come to the understanding that we are Israelites, right? Now, remember, we just read in the book of John, chapter 14, it says, um, you shall remember. Let's get it again. I don't want to butcher it. John 14 and 26 shall bring all things to your remembrance. And this is how we were able to stand on our feet again. Okay. We remembered what was the name of the Heavenly Father, right? And this is through the preaching of the Heavenly Father's apostles and the elders, starting with Great Millstone. Okay. It started with Abba Bivens back in 1969. Okay who we believe was the reincarnation of King David because, you know, this is consistent with prophecy, all right? It said that King David would uh, be regenerated in the last days to bring the gospel to these dead Israelites, right? To these dead bodies, these spiritually dead Israelites. And that's, that's exactly what happened, okay? Salakia. Elijah, Elijah, I meant to say Elijah, Salakia, I lost my train of thought there, I uh, misspoke, all right, so let's go to the book of Psalms, because this is more proof that the Heavenly Father is only dealing with the Israelites, now we read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, that the Redeemer shall come to Zion, to the Israelites, right? And Heavenly Father said that he's going to give us his spirit and he's going to ensure that it passes from us to our seed and to our seed seed. Now, I'm roughly paraphrasing, okay? Now, verse 19, he showeth his word unto Jacob, the Israelites his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, okay? Now, he's only showing his word, this gospel, the understanding of the Holy Scriptures, period, in its entirety, to the Israelites, right? 20, he had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. It's that simple, okay? It is that simple, right? The Heavenly Father made an, uh, a covenant with us, and said that he would only give his Holy Spirit to the Israelites, right? And this explains why only the Israelites have the understanding of the Holy Scriptures. You listen to these Christian pastors, and they have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, it's laughable because you can tell that they're winging it. You can tell they have absolutely no understanding of the Scriptures, okay? They... Um, they give you a lot of feel-good sermons on Sunday mornings, and that's pretty much it. You know, they'll borrow a precept or cite a precept here and there uh, and take that out of context because the book was written to the Israelites. So how can you talk about, you know, the, the um, how can you list these precepts and expand on them when you're not um, talking about the people who those uh, scriptures are talking about, all right? That's like, you know, picking up a, le a love letter and saying it's for everybody when it's specifically addressed to one person. Well, the scriptures are no different. The scriptures 
were addressed to the Israelites. It chronicled our history, the prophets, all right, the life of Yahawashai, okay, the beginning, all right, uh, as it relates to Adam and Eve, the Heavenly Father uh, making, um, ordaining uh, Adam to be the first priest, okay, of the chosen line, right? And um, that's pretty much the extent of it. The narrative of the Holy Scriptures never, never, never changed. Okay, but ironically, the Christians never, ever referenced the Hebrew Israelites, the, the people that the Bible was written to. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's foolishness, man. I mean, and it makes you angry because, you know, they practice what's called replacement theology. All right, they insert themselves in the prophecies and the promises that the Heavenly Father promised the Hebrew Israelites, right? And they make no mention of uh, the Israelites, period, right? It's, it's as if we don't even exist. And in their minds, we don't. Whatever. Everybody's about to find out the cold, hard truth of the Holy Scriptures, okay? Because the tribulation's not very far. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you Christians are going to lose your mind when you figure out that you've been had. You've been bamboozled, okay? Because this Bible, if you're not an Israelite, it's not for you. There's no such thing as universalism or universal salvation, okay, according to the scriptures. Point blank, period. All right? And you can look up the uh, concept or the definition of universal salvation in the Zondervan's uh, uh, Bible dictionary, okay? And it says that's a, a concept, and I'm roughly paraphrasing, foreign to the Holy Scriptures. Because it is. There's no such thing as uh, salvation for the heathen, okay, or non-Israelites. All right, what do you have to be saved from anyway? All right, it's the Israelites that are downtrodden, oppressed, right? So they have to be saved from that state, from that lowest state, okay? Anyway. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Lord's will, this was edifying. Until next time, Shalom.